Hey, everybody, welcome to the podcast. This episode, we're super excited. We have the amazing Angel Ramirez Jr. joining us from Barrio Boys. And hello, Angel knows hello, guys. How are you? Pretty good, pretty good. Today's my birthday, so I, I definitely- Woo! The weather seems to be beautiful, so. Happy birthday to you. So, so for those of you who um, are fans of Angel and the guys, we we say Barrio Boys, but <laughs> it's actually Angel. Los Barrio Boys, English. <laughs> barrio, don't forget to roll the R's. Oh. Boys. <laughs> that is something I wish I could do. I cannot roll my R's. Like a... Oh my gosh! <laughs> oh, I did it. Yeah, barrio it. Boys, Barrio Boys. Is that right? Barrio, Barrio, Barrio Boys. Barrio boys. Yes. Yeah, what happens is you just let it naturally roll. Because some people do that. They, and if you give it too much. You just, barrio boys. Barrio. Yeah, and in it. the translation of barrio is neighborhood. Correct. Right? Okay. Neighborhood, your hood. The hood. And the translation of angel is angel. <laughs> or angelito. <laughs> That's right. So, angel, you... Obviously, the Barrio Boys is a band, but that is not actually where you started your um, like on stage stuff. You actually began as an actor, yes? Yeah, yeah. It was just a beautiful opportunity that fell on my lap at the age of 11 years old while hanging out in the neighborhood with a really dear friend of mine, the closest to having a, a brother, because uh, I'm an only child. Uh, as we were going over to his parents' uh, place to go eat dinner, someone was following us, which we thought was something else, but it ended up being a good thing. The guy was a talent scout looking for kids for a movie that was just about to be shot out in Los Angeles, and they needed kids. So that became a little production there, but I come back home to the neighborhood after you know spending a wonderful time with them uh, to let my mother know about this audition that was brought to our attention. Uh, my mom wasn't for it. I go to my dad's aid. He convinces her to take me. We go. The rest is history. It, it was a beautiful opportunity for me. Never thought that it would happen to, to, to me, young kid growing up in Spanish Harlem in the hood. I don't know anything about acting other than play acting, you know, with my friends. Mm -hmm. And um, I got the uh, um, call one day while in class in school that the people from Universal Pictures came down to make sure they speak to the, my school teachers to gather work for what they call a tutor while we're out there filming so I don't miss out on my work. But it was it was really interesting because my mother was there, everyone, I thought I got in trouble. They called me <laughs> right from my classroom to come down to the principal's office. And it was crazy, but it was a good thing. And then I, I knew that it was real, it wasn't fake when I was on this plane heading out to LA. And the name of the movie was called Busting Loose with Richard Pryor and Cicely Tyson. And not too many people know this. For a minute there, Vincent Price, the, the late Vincent Price was a part of the movie. But later, after the editing, they, they didn't need his uh, his scenes. Um, they took it out, out of the story. But we did get to meet him. He was a great man, iconic. And it was awesome. A that's a cool, that's a cool little tidbit of trivia. Not too many there. people knew that, but he, he was a wonderful man, gravitated to all of us, the kids, just like Rich and Cicely. And that's when my career started. And that's where I joined Screen Actors Guild. Angel, I, I, I'm curious. I'm sure as an 11 year old, there were so many things that were like, wow, this is amazing. I've never you know, experienced anything like this. Can you tell us just a little brief story of something that stands out in your memory about that experience that is just something you'll hold on to for a long time? Oof. Besides all the food that they give you, because yes. we all know yes. <laughs> that's huge. Yeah, yeah, you hit the nail on the head with that one. <laughs> I, I would say the treatment when they, they the the production team and, and the people in charge of the whole production of the whole filming always greet you in the morning, Mr. Ramirez. You, you know, little young eleven year old, Mr. Ramirez. Is there anything you need? We we we're gonna go get some food. How do you like your eggs cooked? I'm like. Wow, I have another set of parents now, but this is serious. Mr. Ramirez, he brought you this. Mr. Ramirez, are you ready to go on set? We have somebody picking you up at the, just the catering and the, the, the genuineness and the respect as if I were like the big star of the project. That's something that, that stuck out with me. 
But then second would be when they brought over a, a, a envelope and they said, is Mr. Ramirez here? I was like, oh, yeah, I'm Mr. Ramirez. No, 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 we mean senior. I'm like, oh, yeah, he's right over here. So they say, could you explain to him? Because they knew he didn't speak so much English. Could you explain to him that this is his pay? So I said, Papi, uh, you know, it's dad, dad, here's your pay. And he's like, pay? Oh, no. And then he opened up the envelope, pulled out a check. Oh, no, no, no. Dile que es un error. It's an error. This is, you know, I don't get paid. No, 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 Mr. Ramirez. It was like a back and forth thing for a minute. No, Mr. Ramirez, you're the guardian, the legal guardian. You get paid. And my father, it was funny, when I explained it to him, he goes, I think I'm going to like this. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, yeah. Put it back in. And he was like, every week, are they coming by today? Are they coming by? Like, yeah. <laughs> That's that awesome. That, that I was able to bless my my dad with, but something that no one knows, midway the film got destroyed. I don't know what happened. We already came back to New York and I was so bummed out the first time because my mom wasn't able to be there. Second time around, Richard Pryor, you all know, got burned. He was hospitalized. No one knew if he was going to recover properly. We were all really uh, terrified and, and worried about that. But then they called us back, letting us know the half, half of the movie was destroyed, unfortunately. Wow. We have to go back and refilm it, the other half of the movie. So this time around, as God, you know, God, God is amazing, my mother was able to go. I go, Mom, you have to go this time. Dad went, now you got to go. Oh, and by the way, they're going to come every week giving you a check. She's like, what? <laughs> yeah, they're going to give you a check. She's like, oh, my God, no wonder your, your dad is, like, skipping, you know. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, that's what it is. But anyway, you got to go. So if you all get to see the movie, realize how from the beginning to the middle, we all look a little bit younger. And when you see the second half, we look the same, but you can tell we we pretty much, because it took almost a year for us to go back, year and a half. Oh my gosh, so, it was that big of a span? Yeah, because he was really hurt. Wow. He got burned um, really badly throughout his body. We didn't even think the movie was gonna get done because of the, the severity and the seriousness mm -hmm. of his injuries. But you know, like my mother would always say, when something is for you, it's gonna be for you. Mm -hmm. And luckily it was able to f be finished and we were able to film the movie and, and it was such a beautiful time. Wow. So you completed that when you were about 13 years old and when did you start in your music career? That came later in my teen years, I would say, uh, at the age of 18, you know, Menudo was huge, a boy band where Ricky Martin came from, Robbie Rosa, and uh, and my girlfriend at the time loved, you know, the, the Menudos and the whole world loved them. They were like the Latin version of the Beatles here in the States. And I gravitated towards that. Wow, I like that. Look at the attention the women are giving these guys. Wait a minute, I can do that. <laughs> I would copy what I would see them do. I would do it in school for the girls for fun. But it became a thing that everyone kept giving me compliments. Angel, wow, you should, you should try auditioning. That never happened. But what did happen was it instilled in me this hunger to, to really want that. Met people through the industry. I made it a thing to go where, uh, where wherever it was that I, that, that, that I needed, the tools that I needed, the, the people, the know-how, the music industry. And I started meeting people that way, like-minded people that in the future led to my connecting with uh, this new upcoming group called um, The Lost Boys, which later changed to The Barrio Boys. Mm. Awesome, that's a great story. Oh, and love... yeah, that's a great story. And how long into your uh, career was it? Tell us a little bit about how it all happened with uh, the English and the Spanish. And well, originally we it, it took about a good nine months. We with persistency, and and who knows who because that's what it is. It's not about not about what you know is who you know that can get you through that door. So fortunate for us, our manager knew a lot of industry people, and all he knew is that if they just hear my group sing, their look, I know we can get a deal, and that's exactly what happened. We connected with someone that he knew that lived out in. Philadelphia that was really connected at the time with a boy band group called The Boys. It was three little three little African-American kids that were making music, you know, history in, in the 90s. And they connected him with this man who had power and knew people. So anyway, 
We met him, sang for him. He was like, oh, wow, you guys are great. He took us to a, a meet with someone that knew the president CEO of EMI, SBK EMI Records. And that was Charles Koppelman. Ran up to his office, wow. sang for him, blew him out the water. He said, man, I have nothing like this in our label. Let's do it. We came out with an English album called Crazy Coolin', made a buzz, but it was so different in, in, in that era, in that time, that radio didn't have a slot for it yet. So it was a little, it gave us a little run for our money, the label's money. And uh, we almost got kicked out of the label, not in a bad way, but it, it wasn't producing numbers for them. But luckily for us, we had three songs in there that were Spanish. They decided to flip the, the, the whole promotional concept around and, and promote the Latin stuff to Latin America, see what happened. It really flipped, wild, it, it was like a wildfire start, got started because of it, everyone requesting us and they were like, that's it. Sent us to LA, Capitol Building, the Latin version of EMI, EMI Latin, uh, which was uh, the president at the time was Jose Bejar, who also signed Selena. And he asked for two things. Do a remake of a song by Bread, Make It With You, in Spanish, in that little style you guys got. And my mm -hmm. second request is that you sing with a new artist we just signed by the name of Selena. She's amazing. She's gorgeous. She's married, guys. But you guys, <laughs> you guys are going to hit good. I want you to have a piece of her market and her have a piece of your market in the East Coast. We did the songs. Um, the first one went to number one on Billboard. Second one, Donde Quiera Que Estés, which was the title of, our, of that new Spanish album went to number one, we're traveling the world with Selena touring. And that's how all that Spanish got, ha you know, started happening for us. And the ride was amazing. I still can't believe it. And it's like 20 something years later. Hundreds of that, hundreds of thousands of albums later. It's oh, pretty man. Good. yeah. So awesome. But, you know, really. Life happens, life happens. But it's a, it's a beautiful story because it's good to be the underdog. You know, no one believes in you, which by the way, the two Zs at the end of boys, mm -hmm. the question we always get, why two Zs? Our manager thought it would be brilliant to put two Zs for those people that slept on the idea that, oh, those ah. guys, they're not gonna make it. It's impossible. You guys are from the hood. You guys are from the barrio, man. You guys aren't gonna make it. You know what are the chances? Huh. Yeah, you, you slept on us. Wow. Z. I zing. like that. The yeah. Z's. <laughs> Don't sleep on anyone because you know what? Anything's possible. That's right. So, so today's your birthday. What are you doing for your birthday to celebrate? Are you a big cake desserts guy? Yeah. You know, even though I'm trying to lose weight and that's not going to help, but um, <laughs> maybe it will, um, just one day cheat. It's not, it's not bad. You know, not a huge piece. I could just take a little, you know, a little, little teaser. <laughs> but today, um, before I do anything, I'm glad that I, I was able to wake up have another day of life to be able to share with you guys and the listeners, the wonderful listeners that come through and always support you guys. So I'm, I'm, I'm grateful for that. That's a, the best gift ever. But today I'm going to take it easy, relax. I'm thinking of maybe, you know, uh, ordering from uh, Red Lobster. I haven't had that in a while. I, there you go. I don't know what the, the I, you know, I try not to follow the news so much with all this because it just creates fear. But if people are able to see, you know, and if they still allow people to go in and see, you know, not overcrowd the place, they allow that, you know, I would love to do that today. But if not, that's fine. I'll order, take out and eat at home while I listen to some Barrio Boy music. <laughs> so, and so tell us a little a, bit about I'm sorry, go ahead, Amy. No, I was going to tell him to have a piece of cake for us too, oh. Duke, since we're not big. I'll take I a know. Plate. If I get the cake today, I'll take a picture, then I'll put two plates. I'll go. <laughs> <laughs> Duke and Amy. <laughs> okay, that works. Right on. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, what did I say? Uh, well, you have things in the works. Tell us a little about what's what's in the works here. So yeah, definitely some, my, my goal for this new year has been bringing back as hard as it's been the body of boys after 25 years with as many originals as possible of the group because that's what the fans want so myself 
David, Davila, Robert Vargas, originals from the beginning. We've gotten together. We brought the attention to uh, two of the other guys, three of the other guys, original guys. Um, you know, unfortunately, everyone has their, their thoughts and, and, and path that they want to take. And this isn't one for now, maybe in the future. So we wish them well with, with whatever their endeavors are. But there's some surprises coming. I don't want to let the cat out the bag, but I know that it's something really, really surprising for the fans. If all works well, you know, it's going to be the Barrio Boys 5.0, uh, like an update on a phone or, or a, you know, computer. You know, the update. You know, 2.1, 3.5.0. You know, I like 5. that. Well, of, of course, especially with today's uh, ways with social media and such. Mm-hmm. That's very, that's, that's creative. Yeah, sure. and do something really, you know, the fans are, you know, I, so that they know that we're listening. The main thing they ask, oh my God, we love the music of today, but it doesn't have the, that much significance as far as storytelling. You guys had that hands down, you know, the, the beautiful Spanish lyrics, the beautiful English, you know, content as well. The production, we miss that. We miss songs about love, about life. Not just, you know, booty this, booty that, booty this. True. You know? And we, we get that, but it's been 25 years and we got to take in, in, into consideration the millennials. It's a different world, not just with the way music is done digitally. Now you you as an artist could do your own thing from the comfort of your own home on your laptop, your keyboard, upload it to the proper channels and sell your stuff and get all, reap all the rewards where before labels were cut in big time on mm-hmm. what they're getting. So anyway, that's a good thing. So I definitely want to bring for us to bring that back to the to the fans, the love songs, with a little bit of the arrangements of today, so that you know they can really gravitate gravitate towards it and not look at it like, who are those five old guys? <laughs> who, are who are those five old guys? You know, we want to cater to the millennials, their parents that know the body of boys and love us, and cater yes. to everyone. You know that the, any anyone can listen to it and enjoy it, and not take offense. So, Angel, I have, um, I was talking to a couple of co-workers and they are um, both, one is from Mexico and one is from Puerto Rico. And both, (laughs) and I mentioned that we would be speaking with you and the younger of the two, who is only 21 years old, freaked out. No way. Oh, my God. I'm their biggest fan. That's my mom's favorite group. We love Selena also. So I think that if you have the parents who are, you know, our generation um, and they're still listening to you, that their children will be Absolutely. just as excited about it. To, to look into it. Oh, wow. Yep. What do you mean? Generationally. So what's, what's her name? The, the one from Mexico? That's Nancy. And her last name is Barrios. Nancy Barrios. Te queremos mucho. We love you very much. Thank you so much for the love and support you're giving us. Thanks. Thank your mom for us, for being a supporter since day one. That means the world, the world to us. Trust me, it does. But we'll be back. God's willing. Angel, <laughs> I know I know you're a writer. Do you do the arrangements with the harmonies and all? Or how does that work? We when not. Because of the Barry Boy experience for me as a as a, a writer originally has helped me tune myself more than ever before with harmony. Where before I was just more concentrated on learning how to do it, learning what it was. Now that I know it really well, I've gotten really good with harmonies. Um and and now I've been able to like this last song that we were a part of, uh just the three of us uh from the original Barry Boys and MDO, ironically, Menudo, the, the generation of now, uh, Frankie J, uh, Angel Lopez, from formerly from uh, uh, Son by Four, really popular group in the 90s as well, joined together on a song called Contigo en el Cielo. And they asked me, Angel, would you like to write and be part? I'm like, absolutely. So I wrote a special part there for the Barry Boys and came up with the arrangements myself. And that was all attributed to all the learning lessons from Barry Boys and being around engineers and producers and, and you know, picking their brain. So you, great. You enjoy the recording experience? Oh man, like never, you could put me in a studio 
And while certain people in there want to call the call it the night, I'll go around the clock. I'll drink coffee, whatever, because it's my element. It's my world. Nice. It, it's like it's the closest thing to a, a man giving birth to a child, because it's it's a thought. It starts as a thought. <laughs> yeah. When you start adding. That's things, great. Adding I, that's things. an awesome analogy. And yeah. When you hear the finished product, that baby is out. You're like, oh my gosh, it's so beautiful. Look at this. You know, so and, it, <laughs> and you don't even have to deal with the pain. That's the only best part. <laughs> That's so do, do you think that the five of you, uh, you know, the Body of Boys 5.0 will be dancing as well? Yeah, well, we got to be honest. We're not, we're not, you know, to a point, and I've seen all the guys, we're not to a point where we, our, our bones ache. So we'll definitely be <laughs> dancing as much as we did when we were in our 20s. Every song had a, going like an aerobics thing? No. But right. Every, You'll still be moving every, though. Every every awesome song that deserves a little teaser, a little mm, mm, and drive the girls crazy, I think will be kind of much, much better because they won't know what to expect. They'll hear a ballad. We're kind of more like swing, you know, uh, uh, interacting with the audience, selling to the camera. Yeah. But then all of a sudden, a song come out of left field. They're not expecting it. And we could be and go back to old school and like, oh, my God, these guys, they still got it. So and I'm in a surprise. That's awesome. Me. Well, I mean, let's just use as a comparison, um, New Kids on the Block. So they are about the same age, um, maybe a little bit younger than mm -hmm. you boys are. And um, they're still reuniting on, you know, the shows on TV. Mm -hmm. they're, they're definitely still performing and they have lessened their dance routines, but they're still doing it. I was a big fan of them. I was a huge fan of New Kids on the Block. Oh, yeah. Well, now that you said that, the idea and concept, aside from being the, the boys to men thing that took us to the top, was always visiting and, and spending time with New Kids. Our manager, ironically, got the concept for the Barrio Boys because he was really close friends with Maurice Starr, the mm -hmm. creator of New Kids on the Block. And um, in a nutshell, he designed jackets, rhinestone jackets in the 90s was a huge thing. He purposely bought five jackets, drew all their faces on it, had a, a airbrush guy do the faces. He rhinestoned it, went to a show, went over to uh, Maurice Starr and told him, hey, listen, I have something I'd love to donate to give to you guys. My name is, his, his trademark name was Joe Jacket. And I made these jackets for your boys. What do you think? Blew the guy's mind. That got him in the door to work with them. And he would travel, iron their clothes, their uniforms and everything, cool. their outfits. And from there, seeing them day after day performing and seeing the girls, he's like, what if I put a Latin group from Spanish Harlem, the Bronx, New York, five guys, something a little past the menudo thing would be great. And that's how that all happened. And he was going to take us to Maurice Star. Very, very nice. We convinced him not to. We were too attached to him. We said, no, you're our manager. You created us. We can do this together. But we knew Donnie Wahlberg very, very well, all of them. We would go see their concerts to, to, to gain more appetite for what's to come. That's what I'm saying. Right. You, my children, what it is that you want in your life so badly that you can hone it in by studying it, researching it, wanting it, envisioning yourself there doing it you bring it to yourself you truly do. Mm. yes very much the mindset that's great yeah we, we have to because there's going to be naysayers in any line of work uh why don't you do something else there's lots of possibilities of that are slim to none you're going to get it even from family no get an education which education is great don't get me wrong i'm not promoting not to educate yourself education is part of the process but if you Nothing, you know, it doesn't cost anything to dream. Dream is free. But dream, if you have a dream and you have an aspiration to want something, that's where it begins. It stops when you allow yourself to doubt and those doubts that hit you, that you go, yeah, you know what, maybe it is too difficult. And then you, the minute you say no, you close the door to those beautiful abundant gifts that were just around the corner waiting to happen for you. Angel, that sounds do you like a song right there, doesn't it, Duke? Waiting to happen for you right around the corner. 
<laughs> if only waited just a few more minutes. Yeah, Angel, what do, you, what do you feed your mind with to keep yourself positive? Oh, more and more positive things. Um, more and more positive people. Um, I run from negativity because I know what it does to me. I'm very sensitive. Uh, thanks to my mom's and my upbringing, my mom, you know, and, and my dad as well, in his own way, went through so many hardships, you know, coming to the States from Puerto Rico, uh, wanting to start a new life in a foreign place. They don't know, you know, left from right. They have a, my mother couldn't give birth for a long time. She almost gave up so many uh, miscarriages, but mm. she was a faithful woman, kept believing, kept believing. Then I, I was born. And that's where the name Angel, oh, you know, partially because my dad's name was Angel too, but it was her angel. I was born a few days before her, her, her birthday. So it was like mm. her gift. Um, and all those things attribute to my staying positive, especially now in a world that that's been turned up, upside down for not just Angel, but for all of us. Right. All of us in, in the globe. And the only thing that could, could really help us move forward is to not be so consumed by every negative thing because trust me, it doesn't help. It, it just oh, not at all. Trying to think, oh my god, you know, maybe maybe the news is right. Maybe I should. Oh my god, it's crazy. We might go to war. Dude, my life will end if I go up across the street in the corner. Somebody might infect me. It, it's almost like 9/11. If we start becoming fearful of going out and doing things and and enjoying every last minute of breath that we have, we, we rob ourselves mm. of the blessings that we were placed here on this universe to enjoy and to to prosper from. So for me, music yeah. does it. I, you know, I, I turn off the phone if I can, put it on mute, put relaxing music that'll take me to another state of mind, you know, because we it, it's, it's what meditation does for us, you know? We're constantly on a go, our, our brains, thinking a million things. Oh my God, today at six, I gotta pick up my kids. Or um, I forgot, I gotta do, I, I gotta write a thesis. Oh my God, uh, did I pay my bill today? Oh my God. Uh, <laughs> and that's a constant <laughs> thing. Where you're already planning like 50, you know, I'm exaggerating, but 50,000 things before the day is done. Mm -hmm. but what happens if you, even 15 minutes or five minutes, you kill the noise and put yourself in this blank, you know, canvas of nothing, just, to relax and soothe your mind with nothing but calmness. Trust me, doors begin to open more faster than you can imagine because you're you're resonating at this frequency that's the frequency of allowing things in into your life. It so sounds Angel, crazy, look it up and you'll see that what I'm saying is true. Well, you're talking to two people who are totally on that same wavelength, so. Totally. Um, and, you, I, and you get it, you get it when you're in a, in a space and you're like, God, I don't know this person, but wow, we have such great, you know, camaraderie and the energy is great. I want to meet this person again. That's because you're resonating everyone at the same frequency, energetic, you know, like minds think alike. But when you're somewhere and you're like, mm, I don't know, I feel a little odd here. I'm, I'm going to leave. That's your instincts telling you there's a lot of energies in that space. And from the way you feel, something's not right. You got to learn. Right. To, to it's not a match. It's not a match. It's not a match. I got to get right. out of here. So, Positive. Angel, I want, I, I want to ask you, we know the music you, you, you've you made. If you were, if it was July and you were driving down the street in a uh, convertible, Ooh. what might you actually listen to that we would be like, wait, was that Angel Ramirez listening to Black Sabbath? What, like, what, <laughs> what, what <laughs> might we be surprised that you actually enjoy listening to? Well, I have an eclectic mind. Like, I listen to everything thanks to my my loving dad, who you know instilled that in me. Listening to everything: opera, merengue, bachata, salsa, pop, rock. So I I love it all. But if you, ironically, you said convertible, I have a convertible, so that was good. Um, <laughs> You would hear me, um, let me see. It would have to be, uh, turn the beat around. <laughs> yes. Because for me, I'd be in such a happy state. I've got the roof down. I have a beautiful car. Thank you, Lord. 
Um, it's a new beginning, new year, 2021. Let's turn the beat around with all this craziness. Let's stop listening to that, you know, that music that bogs us down, which is, would be Corona for all of us. And let's do a new beginning. Yeah, turn the beat around. Nice. Oh, that's it. Okay. That was it, hey. <laughs> I saw I saw her uh, glorious show on Broadway. It was fantastic. I heard a lot of amazing things about that, and it's so funny. Gloria, the Estefans, we owe them so much uh, for believing in us, and it all happened uh, a good accident. Our manager found out this is the thing that made him brilliant. He found out they were performing at Madison Square Garden. He was very adamant about bringing us to introduce us to them because he knew if the Stefans could just hear my guys, I just got a record deal, man, I could get them to work on a few songs for them and they're hot right now. Wow, how can I make this happen? So he, he bring, guys, get ready, dress up really nicely. We're going to Madison Square Garden to see the uh, the Gloria Stefan and the and, you know, sound machine, Miami sound machine. What? We're all happy. We're decking ourselves out, the little pompadour, the haircut thing. <laughs> Let's go the big loops, Barry Boy trademark at the time. But we go when we get there. We all the guys in the group, we swear we, we we're on the invite list, whatever. He goes, guys, don't say nothing. Follow my lead. And we're like, what? Follow my lead. What do you mean? We weren't invited, but we're gonna crash the party. What? So we're nervous. The lady comes with the clipboard, the microphone. Uh, yeah, gentlemen. Hi, yeah. This is the Barry Boys. Uh, we just got uh, signed to EMI Records. Um, yeah, we, we should be on the list. Uh, Charles Copperman. We, uh, sent us over to to meet the Estefan. She's like, man, guys, I'm I'm terribly sorry. I I don't I don't see you guys on the list. What? So I imagine kicked into acting mode. We're not on the list. Oh, we're gonna have to call our, our, our the the CEO. The label is gonna cause a lot of friction. This is crazy, sir, sir. Hold on, sir. <laughs> Just c come right on in. Come right on in. We get in. We they, wow. they get someone to take us upstairs. This is all true. Wow. We're in the elevator. We're nervous. You know, we feel like we did something incredibly wrong, but we stuck to the plan. The plan was: as soon as we see any of these Stefans, either Gloria or, or Emilio, break into a still of the night a cappella. Quick! Don't say nothing. Just in the hallway, anywhere. Do you just start singing? <laughs> so anyway, we go. It's amazing. Walking down the hallway, they're taking us, you know, the green room area. You know, where all the dancers and everyone's preparing for the show. All of a sudden, who's walking down the hall, the corridor, coming towards us, Emilio Estefan, and we're like nervous. There you go. <laughs> just did this. And we went from English to Spanish because we knew the two versions, which no one's ever heard. And the hallway, you could hear a pin drop. Everyone's looking at us at first like we're crazy. What? And we're singing loud. You hear the beautiful echo. And then Emilio, from this expression, Two. <laughs> when the song was over, you hear the applause in that hallway. And we're like nervous. And then we we're about to sing another one. And Emilio, uh, who are you guys? We <laughs> came over, I man just spoke to him, the rest of history. We flew out the following week to Miami to wow. the studio to record two songs that um, one was written by John Secada, which everybody knows. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Otro día más sin verte. Oh, yeah. Sure. Quiero ti. <laughs> we love that guy. Amazing uh, songwriter, awesome. singer. One of um, uh, uh, Gloria's backup singers. That's how he started. So anyways, we're there working with these people that were like, what the heck? And, and lucky for us, um, uh, Joe Secada had just gotten signed to EM SPK EMI. So he was a, a label mate. So it just nice. it was the glue to, to the whole idea, and and that's how that happened. That's and amazing. It was very successful for us, and it's just crazy. But I had to add Did that. You, do you play an instrument? Just the congas. Uh, when I was younger, I took some uh, classes at uh, Boys Harbor on 104th Street, Fifth and Madison, for a couple of years with uh, instructor uh, Luis Bauso, amazing teacher who played. You, you name it, Celia, all these uh, uh, big time um, Latin um, influences of the time. And, and I was learning from him, but I, I never continued it. But I occasionally, you know, dab a little bit uh, with the congas and, 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 you know, the drums here and there. Did you ever meet Frankie Malabé? Frankie Malabé? Malabé, yeah. Uh, he, 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 is he the same one that sings a lot of Hector Lavoe? 
no, so no, you, no, 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 no. He he was at he taught was teaching at Boys Harbor for a little while. Okay, well I know maybe that maybe that's why I know the name because I know a singer named Frankie. Um, I don't think his name was Malave, but I thought it was him. Well, you know that oh, you know that you. Duke is a drummer and is a uh, you know percussion. So I know Duke, enough you- percussion not to do it. <laughs> no, but no percussion. Actual uh, musician, the other per- percussionist. What's that? Do you that? know Bobby Allende? Yeah, I know Bobby. I know Mark. Two Mark of the Yenes? yeah, amazing, amazing musicians. Whenever I see them, that's what I do. I, yeah, I, I, I don't blame I, you. I, awesome. I don't blame you. Yeah, Mark. Yeah, they're, they're, they're the next Inspector Clave. Ribarreto, which I you know, was fortunate to meet one time. Amazing what was, man. What was their boy band? Uh, not boy band. Their, their, when they were kids, what was the name of their band? I can't remember. Um, oh, that they were both in? Yeah. It, Man, good trivia, because you got me with that, and I should know this. Um, crap, I can't remember. Oh, well. You anyway, have to Google it. Yeah. We're going to uh, we're gonna have to wrap up soon, so give us a little bit of a little tease of what we can look forward to. Well... Uh, let me see. Last time we talked, you you gave us a little bit of information of, without naming names, about what we, what we might expect from five point oh. Desde que desde que te fuiste vida mía me has dejado derrotado y totalmente destrozado sin tu amor. No hay palabras que describan mi dolor. Que describan mi dolor, mi dolor. Me encuentro solo en esta soledad desde que te fuiste. So will that be you doing it? Because I know that you also discussed how there's all different, um, there's not one lead vocalist that, which is, I think, great. So are you all splitting what you just sang? Yeah, yeah, because it's definitely, you know, two verses, a, a sub-chorus, the chorus. Great. So definitely the, the whole, I'm glad he brought that up. You know, everyone was, oh, who's the leader? Who's the leader? And although you would see one particular person singing one song totally and we're in the background, a lot of people, they would misunderstand it. Oh, that must be the leader. Number one, we made a thing. No one in the group is the leader. We're all, all for one, one for all. We're all the leaders in this group. You see Angel Ramirez singing maybe an entire song, leading his song, maybe that that I wrote, and the guys in the in the background. Or what we were really known for early on was Angel singing, you know, half of a verse. Then Louis would come in, then Hans would, nice. would, you know, he had a stronger voice, so he would finish off in the in the chorus, the build up of the whole song, while we do the harmonies, and then back to maybe Louis will open up the next verse. Then I'll trade off, you know, um, doing the second half of the. So we'll split it in evenly as, as best way possible because what comes from that is the love and attention from the fans. The fans may a million fans may love Louis. Two million loves Robert, which doesn't lead so much, but they love to see him. Three million will love Angel. Five million will love the other guy. So when you add that up, if you just put one guy, they're gonna still love the group. They're like, oh man, I no, it's true. Yeah, just break true. it up, make it more fun and more uh, uh diverse it's like eating the same candy all the time like, i wish they had other flavors yes you know you gotta give them you know yeah another good analogy well this is exciting uh this has been very entertaining right dude to say I've the had, least i've had a blast and i'm oh, i really yeah. appreciate you spending your birthday with us that's awesome oh, no anytime and listen it's a beautiful thank you for allowing me this opportunity on my birthday, I, I look at it as a, as a gift because anytime that you can share your experiences, your trials and tribulations, you know, and it's just one person that hears your, uh, your, your podcast show gets moved, inspired to change their lives. We don't know what the listener's going through. Mm-hmm. You know, they may be in a, in, a, in a really rough, going through a rough situation and anything we say can shift their their life in such a positive direction that we did our jobs. So why not come on here and do something that, that, you know, it's just meant to be, you know, um, God gave me this gift. Why am I going to be selfish with it and, and keep all the presents for me instead of just spreading it? And that's what you guys are doing, spreading a lot of beautiful gifts 
to those people that need entertainment, especially during these times right now where, you know, a lot of us are afraid to go out. So what do you do? Your home quarantine? Whatever, whatever. Hey, let me listen to that show. <laughs> it's a right. Beautiful That's right. Thank you. Thank so, you. Well, we appreciate that very much. Ab- that- absolutely. Thank you. Yeah. Absolutely. And, oh, one last thing before I let you guys go, because um, <clears throat> very important for anyone that would like to follow me through social media, you can follow me uh, Instagram at Arami Boy, A R A M I B O I, one word. You could also follow at Barrio Boys on Instagram, B A R R I O B O Y double Z. Um, for those Spanish listeners, they, they, they may not, they, they just heard about this and they came through and we're predominantly talking in English. I'll say that address in Spanish. Si quieren seguirnos a través de Instagram, pueden hacerlo a través de arroba aramiboy, A-R-A-M-I-B-O-I, y también Barrio Boys, arroba B-A-R-R-I-O-B-O-Y-Z. Excellent. Thank you so much, Angel. Thank you guys so much. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Stay safe and blessed always. And um, whenever you guys need me, I'm just a phone call away. God bless you all. Be safe and prosperous. Thank you. You too. And have an amazing birthday. Thank you. And se te quiere de gratis. Do you know what that means? I love Uh, you. I, I, I was just, I was, I was, Translating She's it speechless. in my head. <laughs> She's dumbfounded. She doesn't know what to say. I love you for free. I love you for free. Peace, guys. We'll talk soon. Take care. Bye. Thank you, Angel. Thank you.